Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having an awesome uh, weekend, right? Hope everybody's having a great weekend, spending a lot of time uh, with the most important people in our lives. Again, at the end of the day, what's the whole point of clicking a mouse if you can't actually enjoy your life? And uh, I, I think this week, um, I, I think this past week, and by the way, it was a short uh, it was a short version of a normal trading week. Uh, Monday, the markets were closed uh, because of the uh, MLK holidays. So we had a, a four-day uh, we had a four-day uh, session, and in that four day, it, it really does prove again uh, a lot of things that you know we we constantly talk about throughout the years uh, that the indexes mean absolutely nothing. Okay, like zero. Uh, you know, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, if the market is up 500, down 500, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, uh, the indexes should never, um, you know, they should never put you in a situation that you your performance is based on the scoreboard. We've said this uh, many, many times. Uh, another thing we talk about is how important it is for a trader to adapt. Okay, to adapt to the new market, okay, the market that was around, you know, 10, 15, uh, even almost 20 years ago for me, uh, has completely changed. The dynamics have changed because of the technology. It's really isolated a lot of things that traders for years took for granted and they thought they were going to change. So, for example, when you see somebody talking about chart patterns, okay, and unfortunately, a lot of you guys, the only exposure you do have. Uh, to the market and to trading this is unfortunately through through social media. Okay, um, most of you guys have never had that one-on-one -on -one interaction, personal relationships with people uh, sitting and trading on the same trading desk. Uh, it was an incredibly important development uh, years ago when the internet was just kind of in its infancy stages. So unfortunately, the only thing you have is the exposure of you know some random avatar talking about. Uh, two or three chart patterns that uh, they trade all the time. The problem with that statement is because of technology, okay, uh, because of the ever expanding uh, algorithms and computer programs and all these different areas that weren't around 15, 20 years ago, uh, that they can really make all these trading patterns, chart patterns kind of obsolete after a while. Because again, they're like heat seeking missiles. Technology is always trying to find a way to stop the, you know, to stop whoever's on the other side of the trade. So if you're still trading a pattern compared to a process, eventually your pattern will be recognized by technology. And then you'll start seeing your results slower and slower and slower and slow down until they become completely obsolete. And then you have to find other ways to make money. Um, so that, you know, it, it's very, very important. Like, for example, this week, um, I've always been conscious to, uh, to option flow, right? Always been conscious to option flow. About a year ago, uh, I had, you know, an option scanner and, you know, I really found myself not really using it. I was conscious of it, but not really using it. And, you know, the last week or so, we've started doing it again. I started, you know, looking at really, really specific option flow in the names that I trade, you know, the Netflixes, the Teslas, Amazons, uh, NVIDIAs, Alibaba, we'll get to that in a second. And it really started to make sense to me because when you see the point of trading beta is most retail is not in it. Okay. And that's why they're so highly predictable because retail for the most part is in $2 stocks or $10 stocks, $20 stocks. Again, I said this even last week, uh, on the update, the, the higher the price the stock goes, right, you're going to have a lot less retail participation. And what's great about the option flow is, again, I don't trade options. I, I'm probably um, the least experienced option trader that you know. Okay, and uh, it's never been my thing. Um, and it's great. I know a lot of people who do tremendously well trading options. I'm just not one of them. I, would, I, have, I was never exposed to the option market. But I do recognize its significance and I understand how relevant and important it is uh, to the pivots that I trade. So, for example, if I'm sitting there and I'm looking at a pivot 
For example, at 159 on the video or 158 and a half in the video, which we realistically had uh, in, the, in the room on Friday, and then all of a sudden I see flow after flow. You see sweeper after sweeper after sweeper coming in on the 160s, the 165s, the 170s. You know institutional, not necessarily smart money, but you know institutional money flow is focused on the pivot that you are about to trade. And you know, for, if it didn't give me if it didn't give me confidence for the last six years trading these pivots without knowing that there's institutional confirmation coming up in front of me or just literally coming up behind me at the same time, I know it now. And the fact that you see uh, buyers after buyers after buyers coming in and putting in you know aggressive money behind the pivot that you're about to trade, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars per sweep. Okay, it's like, and I, and, I, and I tweeted this out, it's like holding a pair of aces, okay, and all of a sudden you're getting, it's almost mentally you're getting dealt another ace. So it makes the trade, makes the setup not only uh, more aggressive in your mind, but it gives you so much confidence that you're going to be right. Now, again, is every single sweep correlated into a, a winning situation? No, but when it does line up and it's all about correlating either uh, intervals or circumstances or catalysts when everything lines up and you get that big green light uh, it makes the trade uh, that much mentally easier to trade uh, especially uh, especially for newer traders and again kind of going back to uh, the first thing again indexes don't matter okay you have the s p the dow and the nasdaq pretty much flat on the week okay really really flat on the week and we saw some incredibly aggressive action in semiconductors, okay, uh, in beta, okay, um, and these are you know these are our sweet spots. These are you know the, the more the more exaggerated potential of a range is where we want to uh, allocate our time and allocate our efforts. And this week we saw a very very aggressive uh, continuation of money flow, speculation money flow uh, in the technology sector. Without the indexes, okay, uh, without the indexes actually having to do anything, uh, but I think um, I, I think what, one of the most important parts uh, that we always try to you know really instill, especially in new traders, um, you know, just on, on the mindset, you could be wrong, okay, you could literally be wrong in your sentiment, you could be literally wrong in the directional bias. But that's okay. Okay, you don't need to be. You know, you don't need to be right. Again, we are wrong every single day as traders, as parents, as human beings. We're flawed. Okay, so you, it's okay to be wrong. Okay, just don't be wrong financially. Don't be stubborn and be wrong financially. So, just to give you a perfect example, so the first three days of the week. Okay, the first three days of the week, you started seeing lower highs. Okay, you started seeing lower highs coming in, lower lows. And the bulls did a really, really good job defending technical levels, right? First day it held a 50, and then the next day it gapped lower, which was very, very impressive because the bulls bought that dip again and started taking the market higher. So by the time we got to Friday's session, okay, you had Intel the night before coming out. You know, the earnings weren't horrible, they just weren't they weren't great. Okay, it was very kind of a mixed bag. Um, and in 10, 15 years ago, if you would have saw Intel gapping down, and it wasn't a huge gap down, three, four bucks, whatever it was, it would have taken down not only the semiconductor space, but it would have taken down the whole market, again, put in a lock limit on the NASDAQ futures, and we would be having this conversation, you know, down 200 on the NASDAQ composite. And none of that happened. And again, it shows you how important it is to read sentiment, okay? Don't put, and I use this phrase all the time, don't put the cart in front of the horse, okay? We don't need to be right, okay? You don't need to be right, okay? You need to stay profitable. Because again, my whole sentiment for the Friday, going into Friday session was, well, Intel just got it lower. We just put in three days in a row, of lower highs, lower lows. All we need to do right now is confirm this 160 on the Qs and we're gonna start heading lower, okay? That was, my, that, that was the point of reference going into the trade. But again, it's not about us guessing, okay? It's collecting data and waiting for that confirmation to occur. And guess what? It never confirmed, okay? So once it, once the opposite side of your sentiment, once the opposite side of your uh, collection of data is wrong, 
Okay, you don't put allocate, you don't allocate money behind it to test that theory while well, you take the other side of the trade. So again, guys, like I say this all the time, you could be wrong theoretically, okay? Don't be wrong financially. And that's the whole point of collecting data, understanding order flow, watching, you know, watching sentiment, sitting, watching screen time. Again, guys, I can't emphasize enough how important it is, especially for a new trader to sit there for six, seven hours a day and just watch order flow. Okay, watch what happens when a stock triggers. Watch what happens when a stock builds. Watch level two. Keep on watching the buyers and sellers. Watch a reload seller. Watch a reload buyer. The more you sit there and can identify the market participants and what the stock is doing after a good reflection point, then you can start slowly removing all the things that are not happening. And it's not the money you make sometimes, it's the money you save that's gonna really add value to your account. So going in a pretty solid week of trading, I had one day, I, I didn't make any money, and that was on, I started the week on, it was Tuesday. I, I did really well with Tesla. I took out like five out of Tesla on the short side. And then Wednesday, I, I remember, I forgot what, what the first, I think I traded Tesla successfully and I traded, I think it was Netflix. No, it was, I traded Tesla and Netflix successfully on Wednesday. Not huge trades, but, but pretty decent trades. And I got caught on Amazon. I got caught on Amazon, not once, but not, not only once, but twice. And I wound up losing about 10, 10 points on the trade in two separate trades. And the worst part about that trade was the one thing that no matter how long you've been trading, there's no way you can possibly defend. And that's having a reload buy or reload seller. And as the market was pulling in on Wednesday, I started shorting Amazon and there was a reload buy. They just couldn't crack that area. And, and I, I try to give it as much time as possible. Maybe I overstayed my welcome a little bit too long and it, it wound up squeezing me out, not, not, not big at that point. It was about five and a half, six dollars, whatever it was. And the worst part of it is as the futures went lower, right? Futures went lower, Amazon confirmed down, right? It confirmed down and I shorted it again. Okay, shorted it again. And the only thing that screwed me up was that reload buyer came back again. He literally came back again and squeezed me back out again the second time. I went right on the day. Okay, went right on the day. And then once they cleaned up that buyer, okay, and this is the one thing that we say all the time, we don't know who's on the other side of your trade. It could be Joe Schmo for 50 shares, or it could be, you know, David Einhorn for a million and a half shares. There's, there's no way that you will win that interval with a reload motivated buyer or seller, depending which way uh, you're trading the market. The worst part about it is they squeezed me back out. They never even took out that previous, previous high. They squeezed me back out. Uh, I went red right on the day. That was on Wednesday. And once they cleaned up that buyer, Amazon naturally, uh, you know, went down about 20 points, which it sucked. But, it, you know, again, I've realized a long time ago, there's no point to take it personally. Uh, there's no point to revenge trade it. it. You know, it's just part of the game. Okay, it's part of the game. And I figured this out. Uh, many, many years ago. And, you know, again, uh, your mindset is if you're a professional trader that you can walk on water, that you are untouchable, okay, that everything you're going to do is going to make money. But the reality is sometimes the market guides will really open up your eyes again and show you how really insignificant you are, okay, and they will teach you a lesson, they will humble you. And then it's going to put you in a situation that you have two ways of thinking about it. It's either you, you, you lock yourself mentally down and start taking everything personally, or you just realize it's part of the business. It will happen again, right? It will happen again. And the moral of the story is there's nothing you can do about it. Again, you got to take the good, you got to take the bad and take the ugly. Uh, Thursday was some pretty decent action. I did okay. I, it, was, it wasn't anything great. It was some decent action. I, I, I overtraded a little bit. Um, I actually overtraded a lot. Um, usually, I, I, I'm never that active on Thursday. Um, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Thursday, it's so, it's so amazing. Thursday, I started the day again pretty well, and then I caught my second reload seller of the day. Okay, I started the day off. I caught a good Xilinx trade. If you guys remember, Xilinx and uh, LRCX, um, they reported really good numbers. I caught Xilinx off that opening uh, off that opening move. Um, and then Netflix came on, right? So I, I, not only did I run into a reload seller on 
what on Wednesday, I ran into a reload seller on, t- on Thursday again on Netflix. I got caught twice in Netflix again. Again, they just, I just, they just couldn't get rid of that seller. And finally they got rid of that seller and I bought it the third time around on Netflix and I made everything back that, that I lost in the first two trades on Netflix and a little, you know, I think a little bit then some. Uh, so I made some money on Thursday and, and Friday I did pretty well. Uh, Friday I did pretty well. I caught, um, I caught Square, uh, Square, Tesla, Square, Tesla. I can't remember, man, so far back. I can't remember. It's so amazing. I can't swear back. So Friday was actually a pretty good day. So I did, I did well on uh, Tuesday because Monday we were closed. Did well on Tuesday. Uh, Friday was a decent session. Uh, Wednesday, I lost money and Thursday, I made some money. So it was, it was a really, really kind of weird week. But again, at the end of the day, you really embrace everything. You really, really do embrace everything uh, that the market gives you. Because again, if it was just all one way, right? And you had a, you, you know, you traded in a perfect line, then everything would be great. You know, nobody would have any uh, financial or mental ramifications uh, in their trading career. But unfortunately, again, most traders don't get to that point that they experience everything because unfortunately they take everything to heart. Okay. Uh, they take everything to heart. Uh, everything is the end of the world. Every single trade needs to be uh, this global epic event because if it's not, okay, if it's not, uh, they mentally shut down and everything is horrible in their world and they think they're living under, under a dark cloud. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, unfortunately, they're just going through everything that every single trader has gone through. Okay, It's going through and it will go through again. So again, uh, all this is all part of the recipe for being a professional trader. You take the good, you take the great, you take the phenomenal. And by the way, you take the shitty, you take the sleepless nights, you take the self-doubt, you, you take the self-pity, and everything, and if you can overcome that, then obviously you will start being a professional trader and really accepting for what this is. So uh, Friday, good action, really good action on Friday. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about Friday's session. Uh, it started out with Square. Again, Square uh, has been just a very, very good, aggressive stock. Uh, it, it actually held up very well uh, through the first X amount of days for the week. Uh, and again, we talked about this all pre-market. Uh, Square needs to reclaim uh, that 75 area. Uh, why 75? Uh, why 75? If you look at the 60 minute view, uh, 75 was right here. 75 was the high of this channel here. You can see here's 74.94, 74.98. Uh, again, a lot of new traders ask me all the time, uh, you know, are pre-market candles and after after market candles uh, relevant? Absolutely. It's all collecting data. The more candles you have, that means the point more points of reference than you can validate risk. So absolutely. And this is all pre-market. This is all pre-market trading. And once it broke out above that 75 candle, uh, you can see that first move was up a dollar, retraced back to like 75.20s. And once it started building again, really, really aggressive move to the 77 level. Congratulations, you guys uh, who caught that trade. Um, Amazon, you know, I missed this Amazon trade um, and Amazon started acting kind of funky uh, on Friday. I missed this Amazon trade. Uh, It went from like 1673 to like 1683. And then it started kind of fading back down the whole way. I didn't get this trade. If you guys did, uh, congratulations. Um, Let's see here. It's, it's, it's ironic. Here's like, I, I caught Huya. Uh, this was a nice trade. This was a really nice trade. If you guys remember the previous day, uh, IQ broke out of that channel around $20. Okay. And it, it, it sat there the whole day. So excuse me, around $19. And it sat there the whole day and sat there the whole day. And then finally uh, the stock went. And I basically said, Huya is the same thing. You know, Huya had some news with uh, YY on Friday. I forgot what the news was. It was either a uh, stake in the company or investment in the company, something like that. You can, you can, you can, you know, you can do a little bit of research and see. Uh, but who, I said, listen, this thing just needs to reclaim 20, 90, 21, and it should go. It's the same chart as IQ. And, uh, you know, this was a nice trade. It was pretty, pretty quick too. Um, yeah, so here is who, right? Here is who, here is the daily chart. Again, I, and I had people ask me, well, where did I get this 20, 90, 21 area? So if you, if you look at the daily chart, it stopped right on supply 2090. So it really needed to start building above that 20, 90, uh, 21 area. And if you look at the IQ chart, it was exactly the same thing, right? Exactly the same thing, confirmed the top, upper channel and the stock really went. So uh, Huya put it in that initial move of uh, 21 and then it retraced. 
And the second time through 21, it just went straight up. I mean, really straight up, very, very quickly. Uh, went as high as like 2260. Really good trade. I was, I was pretty happy uh, with that trade. Um, and then Tesla. Um, so he, I think I, I caught the only candle, uh, the only channel on Tesla to the downside. There was one to the upside that we talked about. Uh, but I, I caught this channel to the downside. So again, the whole point of the PS60 process is identify sneaky pivots. You hear me talk about the sneaky pivot all the time. And it, 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 most traders can't identify this channel because it's not at the top, it's not at the bottom. It's kind of somewhere right in the middle that most traders will never even, even acknowledge it was there. But I saw this area there and I saw this area there for, for a trade. Um, and we, we started looking at this 291, 25, 291 area. And I said, if it builds below, it can flush. And here is the area. Um, let me just show you guys the area uh, that we talked about. So here's the 60 minute view, right? Here's the 60 minute view. So this is the area right here. If you guys notice this channel right here, this is 291.25. So I let it go through the first time. Again, everything we do now is on second entry. So I let it go through the pivot and it put in a low of like 90, 290.80s, right? 290.80s and it's popped back up. So I was waiting for that confirmation below that 290.80s. And I shorted the 290.80s. It was kind of just sitting there, right? It was just kind of sitting there. It was trading, you know, 290.30s, 291.30s. You know, it was just like bouncing within this like 60, 70 cent channel. And then it finally started breaking down. Well, I, I don't want to use the word breaking down. I know Tesla, Tesla bulls and bears are so, they're so fragile. We, we live in such a soft society. I got to choose my words wisely. <laughs> So it started working. Let's just say that much. It started working. I was going to give it a dollar dollar risk. So it started working. So I wound up on my runner. I wound up making like a dollar, a dollar forty on the trade, and it held this bottom channel here. And I and I and I said, and I really felt like if it would, the next level down in this thing, if it would have really confirmed this candle here, which is around that two eighty nine fifties, right? If it would have just started confirming this channel here, I thought we were going to really have an aggressive sell-off, but it never did. But again, here's another point of saying that, you know, you could be right, okay? You could be right on your trade and still be wrong. Uh, you could still be wrong in market directional bias. And again, this is why we always say, take money on the way up, take money on the way down, use break even as your stops. And again, just to, you know, again, not every single trade needs to be a five, ten dollars move. I had some crazy, really aggressive trades on Tesla uh, just in the last couple of weeks. But, you know, this was just one of those trades, just good cash flow. It never did confirm. So I covered it up and the stock started moving back upwards. And again, it actually gave you good opportunities to the upside, right? We talked about uh, this 293.40 candle that traded right to supply. And then we talked about this candle here. And I even tweeted this out uh, on, on, on social media that I said, hey, listen, any build or any close above 296, is bullish, and as soon as you know, as soon as it started building, and then you started seeing again, kind of referencing back option flow, you started, you saw a block, a block trade. I believe that block trade was. Let me see what it was. Um, let's see here. The block trade was. Let me see what the block trade was. I think it was like 1.7 million. Okay, uh, I think it was like 1.7 million dollars. Of uh, was it here? No, this is this is the Netflix trade. Um, uh, yeah, and so here's where I, I tweeted out: uh, any close over 296 is bullish. Obviously, close at 296. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is the Nvidia pivot. Um, I just can't find it. Oh, here it is. So here's the block that went off, right? Here's the block that went off on the option side. Uh, somebody, you know, had a 1.7 million bet on the February 3:30 calls. And it's, I mean, it really, really got, it really got uh, Tesla going and it put up, you know, put up a good, you know, two to two and a half dollar candle. So I know some of you guys uh, caught that trade as well, right off, you know, right off that uh, option trade. Um, but again, it just kept on going. We just kept on going over and over. Uh, so here's more, you know, so the Tesla trade was good both to the downside uh, and to the upside for all you guys who caught it. Huyu was really good. Um, Let's see here. Tesla, Netflix ran very, very well. And then you started getting to this. I mean, this is where you, you can really see how aggressive the semiconductors were. Again, Intel guided lower and the video was down $2. And then you just started seeing sweep after sweep, the 160s, the 165s, the 170s. 
And here's the number, 158.60 needs to build. And if you look at NVIDIA, just the monster. Again, here's the top of the channel here, uh, 158.60. And once it got above 158.60, traded to 62. Big, big move on NVIDIA. Again, good job for all you guys who traded as well. Um, Yelp. Um, I think Yelp goes. Um, you know, we saw, again, again, talk about, again, trying to develop more tools to use to kind of solidify what you're doing in the first place. Again, I was watching Yelp and uh, somebody, you know, took a bet, $400,000 worth of the February 41 calls. And I looked at the pivot, saw that it correlated uh, 3685, 37 needs to build. And again, was this the biggest move in the world? It's not, but I still like the chart. You know, I still like the chart. Here is the 3685 area. I traded up to like 3720s, but the point is the chart still looks really, really good. You had the call buyers come in, so it gave you added kind of confirmation and confidence in the trade it was going to be working because you saw the institutional money flow uh, go into that. So uh, again, I still think the stock goes higher. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's it. But uh, again, pr some pretty good action, really, really good action, uh, especially to end the week. And again, I'm going to continue uh, to grow as a trader this morning. I woke up, I started back testing. What I did was uh, I actually removed uh, all these uh, different studies that I use. Okay. And I had kind of, the only thing I left was uh, a Bollinger Band. And I wanted to see a naked view of, you know, if there are any other inconsistencies that I can find in the charts that can, you know, maybe add an extra area that I'm not seeing to already what I have. And today I just unfortunately didn't find any. But again, uh, if I never looked the first time six years ago, then we wouldn't be talking about these pivots today. So you'll never know what you'll find putting in the work. And I put in a lot of work, man. I'm not the best trader in the work, world, not even close but I put in the work. And the one thing that I've always said is we don't bet on companies. We bet our process is going to be better than the person on the other side of the trades. And if you don't put in that work, you'll never, you know, you'll never have that really strong grip on what you're trying to uh, accomplish as a trader. So if you're a new trader, again, look at charts. It doesn't make a difference. Even if you don't even know what you're looking for, what you're looking at, something will eventually jump off the page and give you that light bulb moment. And from there on, you'll never know where it could take you. Six years ago, six and a half years ago, I woke up one morning and this is where the pivots started uh, really being born and look where they are today. So uh, going into uh, this week, again, uh, pretty basic, uh, pretty basic uh, line in the sand here. Um, you got rejected here on the QQQs, this 166 level. It's either the bulls are gonna close and reclaim the 166 and so we're gonna go higher, or we're gonna get rejected again in this 166 area, we're gonna go lower. Again, this is really, what's great about technical analysis, you don't need to overthink. This is the line in the sand. I mean, you see it visually, again, the eyeball test is the most important thing. Uh, and look, I, I think it's very, very important to not over complicate technical analysis. Here's the line in the sand, we're either going to build above it or get rejected and build below it again. So watch that. So let me give you guys some uh, ideas that I do like. Uh, for uh, for Monday, I'm not going to give you a lot, but I will give you some ideas that I do like. Uh, I like Apple. Um, you know, it's coming off a of bottom, right? Coming off a of bottom here. Uh, 157.88 uh, was the high in this channel. Put in a high of 58.13 on Friday. If it could just reclaim the 158.20, 158.30 level and build off that, you could see the move. You have potential to 161. Um, I like this workday. Uh, we had it in the room, I think, earlier in the week off this uh, 73 break. It stopped at the Bollinger Band perfectly. So all it needs to do is reclaim this like 176.20 for the next leg up. So keep an eye on that. Um, let me see what else I want to talk about. Um, yeah, I still like Yelp. Uh, I still like Yelp. Again, you have to be more patient on the, tr on the trade. But if you can reclaim 37.25, 37.30, I think it goes. And the last one for you guys, let me see what else I want to talk about. Uh, look at this SFIX. Uh, again, I'm not really familiar with the stock, but again, it looks like IQ. It looks like uh, it looks like Huya. So if you compare uh, the Huya, uh, the HUYA and the IQ chart from, from Thursday and Friday, you'll see that SFIX looks exactly the same. Again, will it go exactly the same way? Who the hell knows to be determined, but it definitely looks that way. So keep an eye on this thing. If it starts building above this 23 and a quarter area, you could get a move to 24. So uh, watch that as well. So that's all I got, guys. So uh, I want to wish everybody uh, an awesome, 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 awesome life. Okay, smile, man. Life is not that serious. Trading is not that serious. Just smile. Just smile. It's so easy to smile 
you'll see how good it makes you feel, how it will really translate for the rest of your life. So uh, have an awesome trading week, guys. For all you guys who are trading uh, with us in the live webinar, uh, we start morning strategy at 9.05 Eastern time. We'll go through all the pivots. For all you guys who are trading uh, with us on the live Twitter feed, you kind of see what goes on there. So guys, have an awesome week. Guys, God bless you all. I wish you guys all the luck and happiness and health in the world. And with God's help, I'll see you all Monday. Take care, guys.